They say that the only certainty when you make a prediction is that you'll end up looking silly. Well, that is a risk that we're willing to take on your behalf. In this video, we're going to share our predictions for 2022. Should we start with our top five cities? And what we've agreed to do here is both list three places that we feel will end up in the top five. Rob, I'll be courteous and let you go first. And also because I'm going to hear what's on your list. Well, I'm not going at all risky with this, I don't believe. I'm picking Liverpool, Manchester and Nottingham. Liverpool and Manchester in particular, even though they did so well last year, you'd think, oh, have they got further to go? I think they have. I think they're nailed on. And Nottingham, I'd be very surprised if that wasn't in there as well. I've also picked Liverpool and Manchester, but instead of Nottingham, and I, I think Nottingham probably will end up in that list, but I've gone for Derby. So at least it's a little bit different. But I think Derby is a place now that will get a lot more attention. So not too dissimilar there, but that's to be expected because we do do a lot of property stuff together. So it would be weird if we had uh, very different views there. But somewhere where we have had different opinions on before is what we feel the UK market as a whole will do. So what percentage growth do we expect? I came up with this number a few months back and I believe the UK property market will grow by around 8% this year, which is massive when you consider what every other professional commentator has said. But I actually really do believe that will be delivered and that will happen. What do you think? No, we're not. We're really not that far apart. 6% is the number that I had. And that tends to be the way it goes. You tend to go a bit bolder than I do. And we're generally sort of like somewhere in the middle there or thereabouts. But some bold numbers. So let's see what happens. Now, let's talk London. Because we always talk about London because it's an interesting market. It's a separate market from the rest of the UK. It does its own thing. And because we've listed it here as a subject, it suggests that we both think it's going to do its own thing as well. And it's not going to perform at the same level as the rest of the UK as a whole. So what do you think London will do in terms of house price growth? I've got pretty low confidence on this one. I think this is hard to call. But I think London will put on growth of 4% this year. So I think it's going to drag the average down. But I don't think London is going to lag by as much as it has done over the last couple of years. But you're still dealing with the fact that London is already so expensive and there's so much more growth potential elsewhere. So on the whole, I think a bit lower than average, but still a decent year for London at 4%. I'm going to have to take a photo of my notes to send to you because... I have also gone 4% and for the reasons you've mentioned, which I think is the first time we've ever been aligned on this number in all the years we've been doing it. So actually, that is a shock in itself. Well, let's see if we stay aligned as we move away from core property and into other aspects of the economy that will have an impact on property. And the first one that we're going to talk about is inflation. But what is the rate of inflation going to be? That is the question. And you're first up, Rob. Okay, I'm going to go with inflation of at least 5%. The Bank of England is targeted with delivering inflation of around 2%, but I just think it's almost impossible for them to deliver that number, and they're going to struggle to keep it anywhere near that. But I really do believe that it will be as strong as I predicted and be at least 5%. But what do you think? It's my turn to send you a photo now. That's exactly what I had. I thought I was being a bit out there with my 5%, but you've gone the same number. Again, for the same reasons. I think that there is so much inflationary pressure. And I'm really generally very positive about 2022 in terms of like what's going to happen, in terms of people wanting to and being able to go out and spend some of the savings that they've accumulated, if they've been lucky, over the last couple of years. There's so much other inflationary pressure as well in terms of commodities and things like that, I do think it's going to be another highly inflationary year. Okay, well, let's see if we're aligned on this next one then, which is obviously very closely linked to inflation, which is the base rate. Rob, what are you predicting for the base rate in 2022? So I'm going to say base rate under 1%. So if it's 1%, doesn't count. Anything under 1% from the 0.25 that we're at currently will count as a successful prediction. Okay, but I want to clarify something. Are you saying it's going to rise? I am saying it's going to rise. So let's say somewhere between 0.26 and 0.99 is the range of my prediction, which is quite a broad range, I know. Well, I've really copped out and I've gone for the base rate will rise. It's hard to know what the Bank of England are thinking or planning to do because it seems at times a little random, even though I'm sure they've given it great thought and there's a lot of intelligent people who make up that committee. So I am going for just that they will increase 
the base rate. Right. Let's move on to the stock market then. So we normally talk about the FTSE 100. As we record, it stands at 7465. Where's it going to end up, Rob? I'm going to put a percentage on it. And I believe at some point it will be 10% higher than it is now in 2022. But at some point this year, it will be 10% higher, which is, you know, quite a movement. I think we're going to see it bounce around a bit, but at some point it will be 10% higher than it is today. What's yours? So I'm just going to say that the FTSE is going to close 2022 lower than it is today, which is 7465. But the FTSE has been such a perennial disappointment. It's gone absolutely nowhere for years and years and years, despite other stock markets, notably the US, hitting higher and higher. But I think it's going to close the year lower than it opened. Bitcoin in 2021 was all over the place. And you know what? I've got a feeling it might be the same in 2022. What are you predicting? So my twin predictions are that Bitcoin is going to fall by more than 30% during the year, that it's going to hit an all-time high during the year, and that would put it at above $69,000. So basically, I'm predicting a pretty wild year. We're going to have a huge crash, and we're going to have an all-time high as well. Not saying which order they're going to happen in, but I think they're both going to happen. What do you reckon? At some point this year, it will hit $80,000. So I'm going to push that high that you've predicted a little bit higher, Rob. But I completely agree with your 30% fall at some point as well. Not 30% from where it is now. That's not what you're saying, and I just want to make that clear. But at some point, it will fall 30% from where it goes up to. I think we will see a lot of of volatility as well, which actually isn't that brave to say about Bitcoin, but to say that it's nearly going to double, which is pretty much what I've said. If that happens, it's still bonkers. I mean, it's even bonkers that I'm making that prediction. But you know what? A lot of people are going to be nodding their heads and cream with, oh, yeah, yeah, expect Bitcoin to get that level. So there you have it. You know a bit more now. If you really want to know more, make sure you subscribe. But if you really, really want to know more, make sure you check out the Property Podcast, the UK's most popular property podcast. Subscribe through Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or however you consume your podcasts.